Good morning, Riverland Hills Church family. We are so excited for our second ever online worship experience. Last Sunday was a phenomenal time worshiping God together as the church scattered. In fact, Bart, we, we, we maybe set some records, right? It was amazing last week. We had, I think the last time I checked, 4,900 views on our service stream. And I just want to thank you yeah, for sharing the service with people outside of these walls of Riverland Hills. In fact, I would love for this to be a great opportunity for God to use this service, not only to reach the people of our church, but share this feed so that we can reach people beyond the walls of our church here. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, uh, I want you to know uh, that while everything seems to be shutting down, Riverland Hills has not. Coronavirus has actually given us an opportunity to expand our gospel influence uh, throughout Irmo, Chapin, Columbia. L let me give you just a, a few things that we've done, and the list is so extensive that I have to have my phone to read them. Uh, so through your generosity, right, we've been able to provide food for Irmo Middle, uh, for Nursery Road Elementary, for Chapin Middle, for Missing Lexington, uh, for Colony East, for River Oaks. There have been multiple places that we've been able uh, to bless with, with some tangible resources and it all is because of you and your generosity. And, and we want you to know that the ministry that we do here at Rivlin Hills can't be done without you. And so this morning, we, we want to continue to point you to our online giving platform so that you can continue to partner with us in some really cool ministry uh, that's expanding the gospel all throughout our community. If you want more information on online giving or how you can give, just head to our website and you'll find all the details there. But I just want to thank you. Thank you, church, for every time we make the call for mission, every time we make the call for you to be involved in what God is doing, you guys just jump right in. Yeah. And we're excited to jump in to worship and biblical teaching this morning from our pastor. Just to remind you, this is a great opportunity right now to maybe grab your Bible and get ready to hear the word it's a great opportunity to turn up your volume as we worship together so that you can sing out together as a family. And it's just a great opportunity to put aside every distraction, except for maybe a cup of coffee, and to focus in on what God has to say to you this morning. We hope this time will be an encouragement from the Word. We hope as we gather together as one church in unified worship, we hope that this will propel the gospel forward into our community, a life-changing message that can influence every one of us listening today. Would you pray with me? God, we come to you today not only because of technology, but because of your Son because of the truth that, that your church is built on who Jesus is, and not only because of brick and mortar. So God, we thank you for that. We worship you and we praise you. God, we, as, we, as we are gathered together in our living rooms, in our homes, and around computer screens, and around televisions, may you alone be honored and glorified by what takes place in this time. As we sing together as family, as we come together and as we open up your word, may you reveal something special to us. God, in these times where there is uncertainty and where fear can be, let us remember what you write in your word, that, that you did not give us a spirit of fear or timidity, but one of power and of strength and of sound judgment, God. So let us lean into you and your spirit that you have placed inside of us, God. For Pastor Ryan, as, as he brings your word, may, may we just soak it in, God, as we learn about the names of who you are and what that means to us. May we, we get a new insight into your character, God. As we learn to serve and as we figure out ways to, to love others and to show who you are to our neighbors and to the folks around us, may we point back to you and the saving grace that you are. We love you, God, and it's your name we pray. Amen. Join with us in worshiping God for His faithfulness as we sing this great classic hymn together. Great is Thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not 
thy compassions they fail not as thou hast been the forever wilt be great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all i have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness lord unto me we want to pause just a moment in the middle of this song and share together how god has been faithful just with the folks who are with you in your room or uh, on, by chat, or even if you're by yourself, just call out the ways God has been faithful. He's blessed me. I've seen him be faithful in amazing ways through these days, giving us more time to focus on family, giving us more time to focus on him. How has he been faithful to you? Share that right now. Sing with us. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Bless Sings a mind with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. scripture I want to read to you today is from Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 through 14. And it's a wonderful passage of scripture where Paul is highlighting the spiritual blessings that are ours in Jesus Christ. And it's a passage that centers in who Christ is and all that we have in him to the glory and praise of God. Listen to what Paul says. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him, referring to Jesus Christ, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. 
In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory.
Well, good morning, Riverland Hills, and thank you so much for welcoming me into your home today. I'm a people person, so I'd really rather be sitting in your home and us hanging out together, but that time will come soon, and I'm so thankful that right now that we have this avenue of um, social media and this avenue of being able to stream services, and actually, I want to tell you, I've talked to some other pastors. God is using this on the internet. He is using churches all over the world in our area and beyond, and I'm telling you, this, this is really a good time for the church. God's doing some great things. And I want to remind you that God never wastes a trial. I know we have a lot of questions surrounding all this COVID-19 and what's going on and uh, just fear and anxiety and all the things that go along with this, but I want to make sure that we're learning what it is God wants us to learn. C.S. Lewis said, God whispers to us in our pleasures, but shouts to us in our pains. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. I wonder right now if God's trying to get your attention. Maybe God's trying to rouse you into a deeper faith, and this is really a good time and a good thing for us to reevaluate what really, really matters. I've decided for the next few weeks that what I want to do is I want to help you know God better, and I want to talk to us about the names of God. Throughout Scripture, there are different attributes and characteristics of God that are revealed to us through His various names. And it's very similar to you and to me. Uh, For example, I carry the title of husband, and that's a special, unique title that I carry with Heather Pack. Now, Heather has the right to call me sweetheart and honey and all those type things uh, because that's our relationship, and that's an aspect of of the name husband. But I don't want my friends calling me sweetheart and honey. Uh, Another name that I carry is dad. And I love it when my kids come to me and call me dad. That's a special title, and it means something. It carries significance, and it helps you know a little bit more about me. Um, I carry the title pastor, and I love being a pastor, and that's a special relationship between you and me, and, and it means so much to me to be able to be your pastor. Hey, when I was growing up as a teenager, I'm going to date myself for just a moment, but I grew up when the video game Pac-Man came out. So guess what my nickname was as a teenager? Of course, it was Pac-Man. And so that carried something. It meant something to the people that called me Pac-Man. Well, today what we're going to do with God is we're going to look at his name that means the Lord shall provide. It's the Hebrew name Jehovah Jireh. And we want to understand that in the midst of all this, that we can rest confidently that God is our provider. Uh, This is a compound name. The first part of the name Jehovah is in the Hebrew. It's It's the name that means to be. It's the name that tells us that God is absolutely self existent. Uh, One of the places where we understand this name Jehovah so clearly is when God instructed Moses to go forth and lead, and Moses said, well, what if they ask me your name? And God said, tell them I am who I am, the Lord has sent you. And that phrase, I am who I am, is the phrase Jehovah, where it says the Lord has sent you, that's the word Jehovah. Now that's combined with the word Jireh. Now the word Jireh in Hebrew means to see. It actually means to see beforehand. It's where we get our English word provision, that God sees beforehand what we need. You're concerned about needs that you have. And here's the great news with the name Jehovah Jireh. God sees beforehand what you need. Nathan Stone put it this way. He said the name Jehovah Jireh means God will see to it. We don't have to worry about a thing that God will see to it. As we walk through these names together, something that's going to be extremely significant as we go through this is where these names are revealed. So the first time that the name Jehovah Jireh is revealed is in Genesis 22. I want to invite you to join me in Genesis chapter 22. You're going to be familiar with this story. It's the story of the sacrifice of Isaac, when Abraham takes Isaac uh, to be sacrificed. Let me just give you the backstory before I get into the text. God comes to Abraham and says, Abraham, as a test, as a trial in your life, I want you to take your son, Isaac, and I want you to sacrifice him. And I want you to take him to be your offering. And so Abraham goes, he takes his son, uh, he takes a couple of um, servants with him, and they start heading towards Mount Moriah. And as they're heading that way, Isaac speaks up, Isaac's very insightful, and Isaac speaks up and says, Dad, where is the lamb for sacrifice? 
I mean, Isaac had seen this happen enough where he was realizing something was missing. And Abraham at that point says, don't worry, son, God's going to provide. Well, they continue to make their way forward. Uh, Abraham builds the altar, and as he builds that altar, he binds up his son, puts his son on top of that altar, and he's about to slay his own son, and the scripture says his only son. And as he's about to do that, an angel comes and speaks and says, Abraham, Abraham, stop. You do not need to sacrifice your son. And the angel said, do not lay a hand on the boy, for I know that you fear God. Seeing that you have not withheld your only son, I know that you will not withhold anything from me. Now, this is the part I want you to see. Look with me in Genesis chapter 22, starting in verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in, the, caught in a thicket, for those of you in Columbia, that's not lizard's thicket, but caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So, the, so Abraham called that place, this is the name of the place, he named it Jehovah-Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. And it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Abraham took a step of faith, and God provided. So here's what I want us to learn. I want us to learn what God wants us to rethink in this moment that we're in, in the middle of a pandemic. Lord, what is it you wanna teach me? What is it you want me to learn? And here's three areas I believe God wants us to rethink. First, God wants us to rethink our faith. Now, if faith is going to really work, then faith has to work at all times. And that includes faith working in the darkest moments. Not just in the good times, but in all times. And there's some keys we see about Abraham's faith that encourage you and me. First, we, we understand about Abraham's faith. Abraham stepped out without all the details. Look in chapter 22 at verse 2. God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Now, these instructions are fascinating to me. He says, all right, Abraham, I need you to go, but you don't quite know where you're going. So I'm gonna send you forth without all the details. Now, that is very similar to what we're in right now. The struggle we have with this COVID-19 is the unknown. Lord, what are you doing? When will this end? What is the next step? How do I plan for the next week and the next month? And faith means we step forth without all the details. A second aspect of Abraham's faith is Abraham was eager to obey. I love this in verse three, check this out. So Abraham rose early in the morning. Hello. <laughs> he was told to go sacrifice his own son, and what did he do? He didn't sit around and say, well, I'm gonna put this off as long as I can. Now, what he did was, as he got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac, he cut the wood for the burnt offering and headed to the place. He knew God was gonna provide, so he got ready. So he went forth with all the details, he was eager to obey, but what I love about Abraham too with his faith, he was confident. He was confident that God was going to do what God said he was going to do. Look at verses seven and eight. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. And Abraham said, here I am, my son. He said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Again, Isaac being perceptive, and he says, look, I see that you've got the wood, I see that you've got the fire, but where's the offering? Here's Abraham's answer. Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So both of them went together. He was confident. God's got this, son. God's gonna do it. I trust him and I know he's gonna do it. Our faith is not really tested until God asks us to bear what seems unbearable, to do what seems unreasonable, and to expect what seems impossible. I believe during this time, God's stretching our faith, God's testing our faith. You may be watching today and you're wondering, well, what is faith? I don't even know what that is. What does that look like? Maybe God's allowing us to go through this time so that you can know God. I wonder today, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? In all the fear that's around us right now and in all these very tense times right now, I wonder if you know Christ as your Lord and Savior. Have you made a decision to receive him? 
Well, what does that mean and how would I do that? Well, God loves us so much that he reached down to us as sinners to forgive us of our sins and to reestablish the relationship that's been broken because of our sin and because of our rebellion. And there's nothing greater you can do at this moment than say, Lord, I admit that I am a sinner and I know, Father, that I have done wrong before you and I come and I receive in faith your son, Jesus Christ, and I receive the work that he's done on the cross to shed his blood for my sins and I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. And listen, you can do that right where you are, living room, watching at an office, listening to this in your car, no matter where you may be, you can make the decision at that moment. You don't need a pastor and you don't need the church building. It's between you and God for you to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, but we wanna help you and we wanna walk with you. My email is pastor at riverlandhills.org and we would love to be able to help you and love to be able to minister to you and we'd love to help you in your exciting journey of following Christ. We're all on that journey together, but we wanna help you start that journey. So. First thing we need to rethink in this crisis is faith. The second thing we need to rethink, you ready for this? The second thing we need to rethink is worship, is worship. We define worship as an event. We define worship as a place. We define worship as a music style. We define worship as a church building. But I wanna show you something exciting in this passage. It may be one of the most exciting parts of this passage. The first time the word worship is ever used in scripture is right here in this story. Join me in verse five, I wanna show this to you. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey, I and the boy will go over there and worship, very first time it's used, worship and we will come back to you. Now you talk about Abraham's faith and Abraham's confidence. He tells these two young men that helped them bring all the supplies they needed for this three-day journey that they traveled. And, and what's so fascinating to me is that Abraham says, all right, guys, my son and I, we're gonna go up here and worship and we'll be right back. <laughs> That's faith. And it helps us to rethink worship is while we think worship is a music style or while we think worship is something we attend, here's the biblical definition of worship. Worship is laying down something that's important to you. Here's what he said. We're gonna go, I'm going up to lay down something that's important to me. In other words, the Bible defines worship as sacrificial obedience. Real worship is not what we get out of it, but what we bring to it. So it may be very possible that in this crisis, that what God is doing is God's trying to teach us to realign what worship is and to rethink what real worship is. I had something that just got me really excited this past week thinking through this. What if during these few weeks that we're apart as the, the church scattered, what if God got a hold of us in such a way that we learned that worship is about sacrificing, that worship is about being obedient, that worship is about doing whatever it is that God tells us to do, and what would our corporate worship look like in a few weeks when we start gathering back together if all of us personally in our worship start getting our life in alignment with God to say, Lord, whatever it is I need to let go of, whatever it is I need to, I've been holding on to, I'm ready to let go of that. So when we come back to worship corporately, can you imagine how alive and how dynamic our worship will be in the next few weeks? God wants us to rethink our faith. God wants us to rethink our worship. And third, I wanna challenge you with this. God wants us to rethink our dependence. God is teaching me about this right now in this area of dependence. There are so many things that we're dependent on and what COVID-19 has done, it has shaken our dependence. I mean, think about this. I'm dependent on a schedule and that schedule has been shaken. I'm dependent on normal shopping, and, and that has been shaken. I, I'm dependent on sending my kids to school. I'm depending on, I'm dependent on eating at restaurants when I want to and how I wanna do it. Um, I, hey, I'm dependent on creature comforts such as toilet paper. I mean, COVID-19 may come down as the great toilet paper apocalypse. I don't know what's going on with all that, but there's these things that we're used to that are normally normal for us that we are, are, are dependent on that have been taken from us, even freedom to travel. Freedom to travel. I, we, my wife and I, we canceled a trip to California that we had had planned for a really long time. I'm supposed to be there. Actually, right now is my Sunday off, technically. We were supposed to be gone, but we had to change that. And so I'm used to being dependent on those things that are normal. And here, 
we learn that our dependency must be on God. And Abraham showed us that example, that faith does not demand explanations, but faith rests in the promise of God. Listen to that. Faith does not demand explanations. And by the way, that's a trap that we get in. We want explanations. Why is this happening? Why is this going on right now? We want explanations about some of the mysteries behind COVID-19 and, and, and how it works and how it spreads and all those type things that we're still figuring out along the way. But I want you to know that real faith is anchored in the promises of God. Isaac's question is probably the best question that's asked in this passage. Isaac asked, Dad, where is the lamb? Where is it? In other words, he was asking, where's the provision? We're dependent, if we're going to do a sacrifice, Isaac says, we're dependent on having something to sacrifice. So, therefore, where is the lamb? Right now, it feels like the midnight hour. Lord, when are you going to break through? When are you going to provide? And did you notice in this passage that it was at just the right moment that God broke through? And God broke through and said, Do not lay a hand on that boy, for I know that you fear God. And I know that you have trusted me to be your provision. True faith is always tested. Listen to this. Warren Wearsby said, God did not want Isaac's life. He wanted Abraham's heart. So maybe for you today, that's exactly what you need to do is give God your heart. Maybe you need to give God your position or give God your possessions. Maybe you need to give God that area of worry or anxiety that you have. What is it that you need to lay down on the altar and say, Lord, I'm not holding on to this anymore because I know that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the Lord that provides. And here's what's interesting to me. We trust God to provide for our eternity. When we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, we know that we know that we know that our eternity is secure. Why is it we trust God for all of eternity, but we don't trust him with the temporary? Why is it we don't trust him right now? So I want to challenge you to trust Jehovah Jireh. He is our all in all. He is our provider. He breaks through at just the right time, and I'm confident he's going to do that in your life. I'm confident just as Abraham was confident. It's a great song that we sing in both styles of worship. It's the song, In Christ Alone. And part of the lyric of that song is, In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. I want to leave you today with this reminder that it is about Christ and Christ alone. Our worship teams came together over the past couple of weeks, and they pre-recorded some music. Such a beautiful night of worship. Uh, it was before all the social restrictions and distancing was put into place. But it was such a beautiful scene to watch our uh, traditional worshipers and our modern worshipers coming together just to worship God and singing in Christ alone. We're going to sing this song for you, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to sing along, and I want you to pay attention to the lyrics in a way that you've never watched lyrics before. God is our all in all, and we're going to make it through this in Christ alone. Worship with us as we sing this song. Oh 
in death. This is the power of Christ in me. And from life's first cry to final death, when Jesus commands my death. Hey, thanks so much for worshiping with us again today. Uh, just remember in the weeks to come, uh, things may get a little bit crazier, but God is our provision and our hope is still in Christ alone. So let's pray together. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to worship as your church scattered. And Lord, we can't see the outcome of what this crisis will be, but we know uh, that you're in control and that's enough for us. So, Father, teach us to lean on you, to rely on you as our provision. Lord, you've taken care of our eternal destinies, and, Lord, certainly you can take care of our present moment. Lord, we pray for those who are on the front lines of battling this pandemic. Lord, would you provide them protection and health, uh, Father, safety and security. Uh, Lord, more than anything, would you just give us this overwhelming peace that passes our understanding as we continue to look to you in the days uh, and weeks to come. Uh, we love you and we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen.